everyone! Today we're going to be looking at this double-sided 8x8 cave door that I built in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This design is 18 blocks wide, 16 blocks tall, and 13 blocks deep, with a volume of 3,744 blocks. This door actually comes pretty close to layout size. I've kept it within the layout, on the top, and on both sides. The only place where it could be made smaller is at the bottom. You could technically remove two layers, Although that is actually a pretty difficult challenge, so I'm not going to be doing that. But what I will be doing is showing you guys how the quadruple piston extender for the middle works. So, it's actually not all that complicated. How it works is we activate this, activate this, activate this, and then at the very top, activate this. And that is going to be the middle blocks for the door. They are obviously going to have blocks here and here as well as everywhere else. This is not the entirety of the door, of course. This is just a firing sequence for what I consider to be the heart of the door. Now for the opening, or really the retraction sequence, I begin by retracting this, 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 extend and retract, retract, and then I extend and retract. You may be thinking, oh, that is actually fairly simple, especially for a quadruple piston extender, and you're right. The issue is that fitting in the redstone and actually finding ways to power the pistons, that was a trickier bit because I'm obviously going to have pistons on each side, then I have even more pistons here with slime over here, and it's just a huge mess and figuring out ways to power the pistons was really the harder bit. But once I combine everything, we get the door. So let's look at the closing sequence. As you can see, it's actually fairly fast. The only thing that it would change is having the top close a bit sooner, but I don't want to make I don't want to make the door any larger than it already is, so I'm going to keep it like this. Also, it has the exact same closing on the back. Of course, it is double sided. What I also like about this door is that the middle blocks are the same ones for both sides. A lot of doors will sometimes have two layers of middle blocks, which just makes the door bigger than it really has to be. Anyways, now let's look at the opening sequence. So it's actually pretty fast. It, the top retracts a lot sooner than the middle, which is not the case for the closing. Another thing that I like about this door is that it doesn't have a cooldown time. As soon as those two middle blocks touch, you can open the door. And as soon as those blocks get pushed back forward, you can close the door once again. The majority of the door is fairly straightforward because you really just have double and triple piston extenders, but I want to talk a little bit about the triple piston extenders that I use for this door. And this is pretty much what I used. These are folded triple piston extenders. Basically, this piston activates, then this one, then this one, and then this one attracts, this one attracts, and this one attracts. That probably is a bit complicated, but when you actually look at the door in action, it becomes pretty obvious how it is working. So that is actually the simplest way of making a triple piston extender, and it just so happens to also be the most compact way. So yeah, it's also extremely fast, something that I quite like about it. The next part that I want to talk about is the double piston extenders on the side, or really just the slime layout. So you may have noticed that it has a weird obsidian pattern. Uh, the the cave doors designed by Viscos usually have these super cool looking obsidian patterns, but mine's doesn't. It has these six blocks of obsidian. And the reason for that is because I'm using a folded double piston extender here, which is really the same size, but it's easier to wire up. So I have a double piston extender here, and then pistons to push forward these two blocks once they get to here. Then on the top, I have this redstone block because it is going to power these two pistons, which will get pushed forward. Because I couldn't really power this block, because there just isn't a component to do that, I had to use a redstone block. And on the bottom, I also have dull piston extenders. It's just that it is a lot easier to power this block with the redstone line or even a repeater. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to the door. It isn't that complicated, I know they're obviously a much more challenging door, is one that I've been stuck on for the past couple of weeks, is a 10 by 10 volt cave door. Um, who knows if I'll succeed in that. But anyways, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Bye!